Hey y'all, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. This week I'm using $20 in groceries to make 40 meals. Now this meal plan was designed to feed a single person for an entire week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you don't need to eat those meals every single day, this could stretch to over two weeks of meals. So that's pretty amazing. Now, if you are a family, you can also use these recipes as well. They are designed for either single people or families. So I think you're gonna really love these. They're really tasty. Let's head to the store and get shopping. Here is my list today. Again, I'm hoping to spend around $20, but it is quite a list. So let's see what we can get. I know it seems odd, but the first thing I'm gonna get is this organic ketchup for $2.15. There's a lot you can do with ketchup. This one doesn't have high fructose corn syrup, but it does have um, sugar and of course vinegar and salt and tomatoes. So a lot of things we're gonna do with this um, this week. Next, we're gonna get eggs and holy smokes, $3.46. Wow, <laughs> that's a little bit over budget, but we're gonna have to do what we gotta do. We need one dozen today. Always check to make sure that they're not cracked. Let's get one dozen. Now I'm looking to spend around two dollars on cheese. They do have this awesome cabot cheese for two dollars and forty-nine cents for eight ounces, but let's see what other deals there are. Okay, I'm seeing some thick cut shredded cheese for two thirty-nine. That's eleven ounces too. So that's even going to be more than that cabot cheese we just saw. Okay, so this is definitely going to be the best deal from what I'm seeing. Two thirty-nine for this one. <laughs> I am gonna be using quite a few seasonings and some soy sauce for my pantry. And I wanna mention though, if you're on a budget, you could even use things like, you know, dried soup mixes, like this onion soup mix, 88 cents for, I think it's two packets or something like that to have on hand. It's always nice chicken bouillon, $1.79 for, you know, a whole big container. These cubes that add a ton of flavor. These are just some things you can keep on hand in the pantry to add flavor. Um, you know, they are full of sodium though, so just be aware of that. Um, but they also have like a large container here of this bouillon for $5.49 that will last a really long time. So if you're on a really, really, you know, small budget, I recommend grabbing things like that and using things like soup mixes or condiments and things to really add a lot of flavor. I am going to get this two pound bag of black beans next for $2.79. I do need a bag of lentils. All they have right now though is the green split peas. I don't see the, um, you know, the other lentils in here, but I do have a bag at home. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. I think I found a couple. Here we go. These green lentils here. This is what I need. One of these and they are on sale for 99 cents right now. So I'll grab one bag. And if you are wondering where is the protein so far, nine grams of protein and just a quarter cup of dried lentils. So you can see that you can get a lot of bang for your buck here with lentils and they really stretch super far, very filling four grams of fiber too. So I highly recommend trying lentils if you haven't yet. Also, of course, as you may know, black beans do also have protein. That's eight grams of protein on these ones here. And that's for also a quarter cup serving and 12 grams of fiber. So that's going to keep you really full. Uh, fiber tends to keep you fuller longer. So just remember that when you're shopping. And spices are a really great price here at Aldi. Walmart has good prices too, but you can see you can get some really awesome si um, you know, spices for 99 cents. So if you need to build up your spices, definitely do something like this, very economical. This next ingredient might surprise you, it might not, but oats is what I'm going for next. We're gonna get old fashioned oats here for $3.89. You get quite a bit too, this is 42 ounces. And again, oats have protein as well. It's five grams of protein and half a cup of oats. And then of course you're getting four grams of fiber too. So oats are gonna be so versatile this week. I wanna show you some really exciting dinner ideas using some oats. I am really excited. In the basket you go. Next on my list is bread. If you have flour and yeast at home, you can make a really simple bread. This one for $1.29 will be fine. I think that's what I'm gonna get today. And surprisingly, there's actually three grams of protein in this bread for one slice. So that's pretty awesome. One gram of fiber. All right. Next, I'm looking for carrots. I was going to go ahead and get the baby carrots for a pound, but for just a little bit more money, for 60 cents more, I get an entire more, you know, one more pound of carrots. And I prefer these kinds of carrots, but if you're really, really, really tight budget, um, obviously you could get the baby carrots and they, those will work just fine. I'm having trouble with my words today. I need more coffee. Here we go. Next, I'm gonna get two bananas. That should last us for the week. 
then I'll get one onion and I'm going to make this work for everything this week because I'm running out on my budget. All right, so onions are 84 cents a pound. Let's see how much this one is, about a pound or so. So a little over a pound for this onion here in the cart. And I'm back at the egg section because I forgot my cheat code. Look, the cage-free large brown eggs are only $2.58 for a dozen, whereas the regular white eggs over there in that corner are $3.46. We can save almost an entire dollar by getting this, so we're gonna do that today. It definitely pays to look at all of the options. Next, I'm looking for a few veggies. I think I'm gonna be getting some corn and some broccoli today in the freezer section. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get one bag of the broccoli florets. This is the best frozen broccoli though. If you haven't tried the broccoli from Aldi in the freezer section, definitely give it a go. Lots of crowns, it's beautiful broccoli. There you go. The corn here is a little bit pricey at $1.15 for 12 ounces, so I'm gonna see if um, it's a little bit cheaper in the canned section. Okay, canned corn is definitely a good price, 63 cents or a can of corn. So we're gonna go ahead and get one of those instead. Grab one from the back here. I also wanted to point out that salsa is an amazing ingredient to have on hand all the time in the fridge because you can add a little bit of salsa to soups to add a little bit of those onions and chilies, tomatoes. You can add them to you know meat mixtures to bulk up some meatballs even, add a little bit of flavor, just all kinds of um, you know interesting ways to use this ingredient. So I love having salsa on hand, especially when I'm making budget meals, you know? Also, don't forget to check the clearance section. They have stuffing for 29 cents a bag still here. That is a crazy good deal because it was $2.49 to start with and it lasts till 2025. Even the gluten-free options are still here too for 39 cents. Okay, here is everything that we are getting today. Let's go see what the total is. Okay, we just ran up and we spent $20.70, so 70 cents over budget today. The first thing I did when I got home is soak my black beans. And I like to do it this way because I find that the beans get cooked through a little bit better, but you can use your instant pot and you wouldn't have to soak them overnight or for eight hours. But I just cover them with about six to eight cups of water, let them soak and then drain them. And then I'm gonna add them to a pot and add some garlic powder, onion powder, and some salt. And I'm gonna bring this to a boil and just let that simmer for about 60 to 75 minutes or so, or until those beans are nice and tender. And I can easily mash them with the back of a spoon. Once they're cooked through, I'm just going to let these cool a little bit and then separate them so I can refrigerate them and use them in recipes for the rest of the week. I do recommend also cooking these beans right before you're ready to cook the black bean soup and that should probably be the first dinner that you make just because the beans will be nice and hot and it'll be easier to make the soup and easier to refrigerate everything in portions later on for meals later in the week. Now I also want to recommend making all of your prep ahead of time as far as dicing on the onion and just having that all completely ready to go in the fridge and all of the carrots. You can slice all of the carrots and chop them up or you can leave a few. You're not going to need to use all of the two pounds of carrots. That's up to you and really it's up to taste but I did chop three quarters of the carrots and use all of them in the recipes. While chopping the veggies be sure to save the scraps and put them in a pot. We're going to make a homemade vegetable stock. It's really easy. So while I'm peeling the carrots, I'm putting those directly in this large stock pot. Just make sure everything is washed thoroughly before you do this. So that way you're not getting all the extra dirt and things like that in your stock. But just make sure you put all of those scraps from any of the veggies in there, except the broccoli. You don't want to put that in the vegetable stock here because it would make it bitter but everything else can go in there just cover with water and then we're just going to simmer that for a couple hours and then later on we're just going to strain that out and then have that stock ready to go for another recipe later in the week so this is just going to make everything a little bit easier for cooking for the entire week so that way we're not sitting there chopping everything every single day that we're making recipes and I do recommend doing most of the meal prep on the first day if you can it really only takes a couple of hours and really just makes it a lot easier to just grab grab and go throughout the week and not have to sit over a stove. So on that note, while everything is cooking and simmering away, the beans and the vegetable stock, I'm gonna go ahead and start making my black bean patties. So in a blender, I'm just going to add some oats so I can make a half a cup of oat flour, essentially, so I can use that for the recipe. And I'm gonna go ahead and also start 
my lentils cooking. So we're just going to cover those with water and add a little bit of salt and then bring that to a boil and cook those for about 25 minutes till they're tender. And then the beans, once they're cooked, we're going to put four cups of them on a baking sheet and bake at 325 degrees for 15 minutes until they're a little bit dried out. In the meantime, I'm going to heat some oil in a pot, add the onions, and just saute those until they're nice and soft and tender. And I'll add a little bit of garlic powder, cook for another 30 seconds, and then I'm going to try to get some of that moisture out with a paper towel. And then we're just going to add those to a blender or a food processor or even just a large mixing bowl if that's what you have. And then I'll add the cumin, chili powder, garlic powder, paprika, the oat flour we made, cheese, eggs, Worcestershire, ketchup, salt, and pepper. And then we're just going to blend it a little bit. Now I just want to mention Worcestershire is not vegetarian. So if you're going to look at this as a vegetarian dish, just substitute that Worcestershire for a few of the substitutions I recommend in the recipe in the notes. And that's something like steak sauce or whatever your favorite condiment is, barbecue sauce, whatever you like. So just keep that in mind for this recipe if you're going to be making this. Once that's a little bit blended and combined, then I'm going to go ahead and add those dried out black beans from the oven. And I'm just going to continue to puree that just until the beans are mostly combined but still have a few chunks as well. I don't want to completely puree this. I want to have a few chunks of black beans. And again, that's preference too. Once the beans were pureed to my liking, I just gave it a good stir so that way all the beans were nice and incorporated and distributed evenly amongst the entire mixture. Then I just put about a half a cup or so on a parchment lined baking sheet, just in sort of patty shapes. It doesn't have to be exact. It can be rustic. It's totally fine. It's not going to make a difference in the way that they taste. And just trust me, they're going to come out looking like burger patties. It's pretty amazing. We're just going to put that in the oven at 375 degrees for about 20 minutes. Then I'm going to flip them and then cook them for another 20 minutes or so. Now you can freeze them uncooked too and just make them as directed or you can freeze them after they're cooked. I just decided to go ahead and cook them all at once. That way I have less work later and I'm just going to freeze them in portions so I can eat them with steamed veggies or I'm going to make another recipe later on. I'll show that to you in just a few minutes. Now while the oven is on, I'm going to go ahead and make my next recipe, which is a meatless meatloaf, or you can call it a veggie slice, whatever you want to call it is fine. I cooked those lentils while everything else was simmering on the stove. And now that they're cooked through, I strain them and I'm going to give them a really good mash. I didn't like a bunch of big chunks of lentils in my meatless meatloaf. So I like to really mash them really well. You can even put them in the food processor, whatever you want to do to get the texture that you like. Then I added the oats and the cheese and the onions and mixed that until those were nicely combined. Now I am going to add some eggs here, but if you don't want to use eggs, you can can omit them all together but it will be a little bit firmer or if you want to substitute something you could use flax eggs or maybe a third of a cup of cooked sweet potatoes or you can just experiment then add all of the seasonings and some ketchup and get everything a good mix until it's nice and incorporated and I added this to a loaf pan and I greased it really well but you don't have to use a loaf pan you could just put this directly on a baking sheet just be sure to shape it and sort of push it together so it does hold when it's baking and that will work just fine now I am making a traditional sort of meatloaf topping. I'm going to mix together some ketchup, mustard, and brown sugar. I did add some Worcestershire, but again, that is not vegetarian. You can just omit that, but you could do barbecue sauce instead or any topping or no topping, whatever you like. What's nice about this recipe is you can kind of make it your own. And if you really like meatloaf, you can kind of use some of the elements that you would use from a regular meatloaf. That's up to you. Now we're just going to put that in the oven at 350 for 25 to 30 minutes or until cooked through. Now here is a look at those black bean patties. They they look just like burgers to me and I went ahead and served these one or two for a meal with some steamed veggies and that would be a great portion and freeze the rest and then for some interesting like mixing it up sort of recipes I recommend using at least two or three of the patties to make a really tasty meatless meatloaf melt. I'm just going to add some butter to a pan, add the bread, top it with a reheated patty and some cheese, top it with the other bread slice, and then just brown it until it's golden brown and everything is nice and crispy. This is really delicious. Tastes just like a burger or a patty melt. My kids love these too. So if you're apprehensive, I do recommend trying this recipe. If you try anything from this video, these really turned out absolutely absolutely delicious. And for a single person eating these, it makes it nice and fun and interesting to do something different with those because you will have eight servings. So you can kind of play with that and do some fun things. Now here is a look at that cooked meatless meatloaf. Some people recommended it. They called it a veggie slice. So you can call it what you like again, but I'm going to portion that into six portions here. And again, I recommend serving one or two slices with some steamed veggies, steamed broccoli, or some of the leftover corn or some carrots, 
whatever you want to pair with that. And then with the remaining portions, again, make a meatloaf melt. If you've never had a meatloaf melt, it's going to change your life. I promise. Try this recipe. Again, you're just going to melt the butter in a large pan, then add some reheated meatloaf. Just mash it down until it's a nice shape so you get a little bit in every single bite. Then add a little bit of cheese on top if you like, and then add the other slice of bread and just continue to cook that until it's nice and brown and crispy. My husband ended up having some sourdough because we had some on hand and the kids just ended up having a grilled cheese this night, but I love this meatloaf melt. It is so, so good. Next, I'm making a really easy black bean soup. Now, I recommend making this on the first night just so everything is all ready to go and done and you can portion it and have it for whenever you need it. Just add some oil to a large stock pot, heat that over medium heat, then add your carrots and your onions and just saute those until they're nice and cooked through and soft and tender. Then I'm just going to add some cumin and oregano and some salt and pepper. Now, I recommend going all out with the spices here. Add some chili powder or any other seasonings that you love, garlic powder, onion powder. Just go nuts because the seasonings really make the flavor for this because we're just going to add eight whole cups of black beans. It's about four cans full of black beans and four cups of water here. And we're just going to simmer that for 25 minutes. And I actually had some limes on hand and some cilantro from the garden. So I added that and I had an avocado. I added that on top, but it's totally optional. You can add hot sauce, but really the flavor comes from the seasonings. So don't be shy with the seasonings. Add whatever you love to this dish. This next recipe is a really easy lentil vegetable soup. We're just going to heat some oil in a large pot and again, add some onions and a ton of carrots here, about two cups or so and I'm just going to cook those until they're soft and tender and then I'm actually going to add a couple of tablespoons of ketchup. Normally I would add tomato paste or something like that to this recipe to give a little bit of the tomato flavor to the soup. We're going to cook out the ketchup a little bit and reduce it for a few minutes. Then I'll add some garlic powder, oregano, parsley, cumin and again add the seasonings you love. Then about 64 ounces or so of the vegetable stock that we made. You can use all of the vegetable stock and I added a tablespoon of soy sauce for umami flavor but again that's optional add all the flavors that you love for this and then just add some rinsed lentils I used a cup for this one and then just cook for 25 to 30 minutes or until everything is cooked through and heated through it could take about 30 to 40 minutes with the addition of the ketchup there so just keep an eye on those lentils until they're nice and tender and I actually ended up serving this on the side with the melts on some of the nights too and keep that in mind with the black bean soup too you can add it as a side dish instead of the steamed veggies. So that's going to keep things really interesting. If you're a single person cooking this meal plan, just pair things differently and kind of keep it interesting. Now, this next one might be familiar. This is my corn and egg oatmeal that I adapted from a recipe I found a few months ago. And I'm just going to cook the oatmeal with soy sauce and sriracha to give it that umami flavor and a little bit of spice. Once that's cooked through, then I'll add a little bit of corn, just a quarter cup or so until it's heated through there. And then we're just going to serve it up with a fried egg and some hot sauce. So, so easy. Comes together in like five, 10 minutes. I love this dinner. If you haven't tried savory oatmeal, try this one. Next, we're going to move on to the breakfast recipes. Now we did get oatmeal, so we're going to be eating a lot of oatmeal for breakfast and that's okay. You can really make it interesting by adding different toppings. I'm just going to follow the directions on the box here and make that oatmeal as is. Then if you're following the meal plan, this is going to be three breakfasts worth. So I'm using a third of the banana for this one day. You can just slice it with the peel on there and then just keep the peel on the rest. And you can cover the end that's exposed with some plastic wrap or a beeswax wrap, put it in the fridge and it will last for your three days there. Just a little tip to keep that a little bit more fresh. So that way you're eating fresh banana every day. And you can really zhuzh this up if you have any other fruit on hand. You can add that or some brown sugar, some honey, maple syrup, some sliver and almonds, whatever you want to add. You're going to have extra oatmeal, so you can eat oatmeal for up to two weeks or more if you like for breakfast, so you can really stretch it if you like. This next recipe, though, is really fun. This is going to be a banana stuffed cinnamon french toast roll up. So I'm going to take three slices of bread and cut off the crust. Don't throw the crusts away. We're going to use those. I'm just going to flatten those bread slices just until they're really, really thin, maybe a quarter inch thick. I just want to get them as thin as possible, as big as possible, because I am going to be adding filling to these so you can see how thin those end up being. Next, I'm going to peel the other banana that we have on hand and slice it up. I'm going to heat some butter in a large pan and I'm going to go ahead and 
and start cooking up the banana with a little bit of brown sugar. If you don't have brown sugar on hand, you can add white sugar or you can use honey. And if you don't have butter, that's fine. You can use oil or water. Any of the recipes, when I mention butter, you can use oil or water instead. Just anything to help you cook, that's totally fine. We're just gonna cook these bananas down until they're soft and sort of caramelized and sweet. If it's a riper banana, it's even better because it'll be more sweet. Then in a small bowl, I'm gonna add one egg, a little bit of milk and some cinnamon, mix that up. If you don't have milk, that's fine. You don't need to add it. If you have cinnamon, definitely add it. If you don't, don't worry. You can just do the egg by itself, that's fine. We're gonna add some of that banana mixture to the center of our bread and then brush a little bit of that egg mixture on one side. It's gonna help us close up the roll. You can see I'm just gonna roll that up and that's gonna act like glue and just keep it stuck together. And we're just gonna continue to do that for the other two slices of bread. Now, depending on how big your banana is, you may end up with more slices. So that's up to you. You can kind of stuff them as much as you want or as little as you want. Just kind of play with that. I ended up just doing three, but I probably could have done four or five with just the one banana. So really just, you know, do what you like depending on the ratio that you like. Then we're just gonna dip that in the egg mixture there until it's completely coated. And I'm actually going to do the same for everything else, including the crusts, because we're going to also use up the egg mixture and just everything. We're not gonna waste anything. We're going to eat everything. <laughs> it's gonna be delicious. Then in a large pan, I'm gonna melt some more butter. Yes, more butter, but again, you don't need butter. If you're using a nonstick pan, you don't really need anything at all. You can just put these directly in the pan. The butter really adds some flavor though, so if you have had it definitely use it then we're going to add those roll-ups there and just brown everything on all sides to make sure it's nice and crispy on every single side and the crust as well everything is going to brown up really nicely and just get beautiful and crispy and I recommend serving these with some powdered sugar on top maybe some maple syrup really add anything you like honey might be good now you could use any fruit you want for this so if you have something else on hand you could make strawberry filled cinnamon toast roll-ups whatever you want you know this is just a really fun recipe to experiment with and i really hope you love this one my kids absolutely love this one too so if you try it please let me know down in the comments i'm really interested to see what your reaction is to this one because i thought it was really interesting and fun and kind of innovative because when we're eating on a budget that doesn't mean that it has to be boring and for the other couple of days for three days i just did a really simple fried egg on toast with salt and pepper and some hot sauce of course i add hot sauce to everything and this is a really surprisingly filling and satisfying breakfast i hope you enjoyed those recipes and at least got a few ideas for things to make in your home if you enjoyed this video please be sure to give me a thumbs up it really helps my channel and of course if you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button and put the little bell on for notifications so you're notified every time i post thank you so much for joining me today have a wonderful day